Okay, great. Our next matter is a clerical error that was not on there as I narrated yesterday. Next matter is the Council on Public Defense. Uh, we should have Professor Robert uh, Borowitz. Borowitz present. Is that correct? Hi, Borowitz. Thank you, President. Um, <clears throat> thank you very much. I'm on the Council on Public Defense as an emeritus member, actually. I've been in there since the beginning. And I am a professor at Seattle University School of Law. And before that, I was director of the Defender Association in Seattle. <clears throat> we have two matters uh, before you today and appreciate your consideration and approval of them. <clears throat> the first one is an amendment to the existing performance guidelines that you have already approved and that the Supreme Court has endorsed. Um, and the primary amendment has to do with what's called persistent offender or three strikes cases. And this was an area of practice that was omitted from the um, performance guidelines earlier on. Um, simply because they we didn't we didn't get to them, but they're based on some work that we did at the Washington Defender Association some years ago. <clears throat> we brought them up to date. We spent about a year on this process. We had numerous meetings by phone, a couple by Zoom. We um, consulted with practitioners from around the state, and. The objective here is to give guidance to people who have these most complicated cases on the kinds of things they need to be doing. So we incorporated into the existing guidelines particular areas of concern that lawyers need to address when they're handling these cases. The other thing we did in response to the, the developments of the past year uh, was to include a provision about being attentive to concerns of racial disparity. So those are the, those are the highlights of that <clears throat> document. And the one that you have in front of you uh, has highlighted the areas of change. The other document that's in front of you is an advisory that we felt it was really important to give to both public defenders and courts and, and, and practitioner prosecutors as well <clears throat> on how to consider the reopening of courts and the pressures and the uncertainties and the really unprecedented nature of how people are dealing with the workload when courts reopen. And of course, as you know, it's a varying, uh, it varies around the state how courts are opening up again and prosecutors are beginning to file some charges that they have held on to. So the point of this advisory is to help people interpret the existing standards that are in place by court rule that everybody has to follow um, and with an attention to caseload and workload limits, that if the workload suddenly surges, you either need more resources or the lawyers have to stop taking uh, the new cases because they don't have enough uh, resources to handle them. So this is an advisory that Again, got a lot of input. Uh, we sent it to the criminal law section. There was no concern expressed. And there is, of course, some timeliness involved and some urgency in, in helping people understand what, the obligation, what their obligations are regarding the existing standards and court rule. So that's what those two documents are, and I'd be pleased to answer questions. Wonderful. <clears throat> Thank you so much. And I'm extremely jealous of your background. Uh, Governor Williams Ruth. Before we jump into the conversation, I would just actually like to move that we accept and adopt the performance guidelines for criminal defense representation, including the additional information on persistent offenders. Second. Motion on the table and a second from Governor Stevens. We'll go on to conversation. Uh, if I can just speak to my motion, Mr. President. Indeed. Um, as an attempt to try and be overly prepared for today's, my, my first meeting, I will say that I did read through the entire presentation and the, and the actual full performance guidelines, uh, not just our amendments. And it's a enlightening area. It's not my primary area of law, so I learned a lot. 
Um, and I think the uh, amendments are obviously well thought out by people who know what is necessary. And I, again, not being my area of law, I can't un expect or understand why anyone would object to these amendments. So I would urge approval. Governor Stevens. Yes, actually. Hi, Bob. This is just a, uh, um, a point of personal privilege just to say hi to you. Thank you. Keep up the great work. That's all. <clears throat> Very nice. Uh, seeing no further hands, I will proceed. And I have a motion that has been seconded to approve the updated performance guidelines for persistent offender cases. I'll move to a roll call vote. <clears throat> Governor Angelville. Aye. Governor Clark. Aye. Governor Grubicki. Aye. Governor Higginson. Aye. Governor Knight. Aye. Governor McBride. Aye. Governor Peterson. Aye. Governor Chiquetti. Aye. Governor Stevens. Aye. Governor Swago. Aye. Governor Tollefson. Aye. Governor Williams Ruth. Aye. Eleven in favor, no against. The motion carries. Uh, congratulations, Professor. And you have another item for us as well. Is that correct? Yes, sir. That's COVID guidance for public defense offices. You'll find those materials on page 441 of the regular materials. Please proceed, Professor. <clears throat> well, as I said uh, already, I, I think what's important about this is we've heard from a lot of defenders around the state that they're beginning to struggle with what's, and, and when they're concerned about what's going to happen when cases begin to surge, as they put it. Um, some prosecutors are holding back on filings and some are beginning to file um, ones that they've held back on. And then of course, there's cases that there's some pressure to go to trial on. Some judges are wanting cases to go to trial. And so after considerable discussion and review, our recommendation is that this advisory be approved so that practitioners and courts have some guidance on the key elements in the court rules that require defender standards with a focus on workload and caseload and how you should deal with it if you get in a situation where you have too many cases. And so there's a, uh, an a, a appendix which sets out a number of ideas on how local governments and defenders and prosecutors and judges can address a situation if they get into a situation where they have too much work for the defenders to handle. And what we've done here is to integrate, incorporate the existing court rules that require defenders to comply with standards so that people understand the implications of those in this really unprecedented situation where courts are going to begin to reopen. Thank you. Thank you. Governors? Move approval. Motion from Governor Skrubicki. I'll second that. A second from Governor Clark. Any discussion? I will move to a roll call vote. Not seeing any hands waving at me. <clears throat> Governor Angelville. Aye. Governor Clark. Aye. Governor Grubicki. Aye. Governor Higginson. Aye. Governor Knight. Aye. Governor McBride. Abstain. Governor Peterson. Governor Shaketti. Aye. Thanks. Have a good one. Governor Steven. Aye. Governor Swago. Governor Tollefson. Aye. Was that an aye, Governor Thompson? Yes, that was an aye. Governor Williams Ruth. Professor Gungard, did you get my vote, Paul Swiegel? No, sir, Governor Swiegel. Aye. Governor Williams Ruth. Aye. Ten votes in favor, one abstention. The motion carries. We have now approved the COVID guidance for public defense offices. And I want to thank 
the Council of Public Defense for all their work on this. And I hope that if you guys need support in some way, you continue to come to us and we love interacting with you and thank you for the work you're doing. Well, thank you very much. We appreciate the board's uh, ongoing support of public defense and thank you all very much. Have a great rest of the day as unsmoky as possible. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank now, I have not been monitoring my Mountain Dew intake and I find my blood sugars have dropped to dangerously low levels. So I'm going to give us a 13 minute break for us to resume at two o'clock. Uh, we've, we've gained a little on our schedule. So I will see you all after a brief recess at two o'clock.